Hi, I'm Charles and myself, Eric and uh, Chris are going to be talking a little bit about engineering and economic analysis. Uh, so as far as uh, finding efficiency within the uh, economics, it is important to uh, carry an, uh, an economic evaluation. You do this by using uh, process flow diagrams. You can estimate your capital, capital costs and your uh, operating costs within the uh, facility. And uh, it will help you find out whether you will uh, make money or not, which is kind of the whole purpose of design is to uh, create something that's going to be profitable. And uh, also determine whether the process is competitive or not in the market. Because if you can't compete with someone else's prices, you're probably not going to win out. But uh, as far as investing versus uh, uh, saving, investments uh, pr provide a higher return for the long run. And uh, investments, the whole purpose of making an investment is to make money. Because if you're putting it, uh, money into something, you hope to get something out of it. Uh, and this is the uh, basic equation for finding your interest rate, your future value minus your present value over your present value times the number of years of the uh, time that it is uh, occurring. But uh, as far as chemical engineering is using investments, I know you think about investments and you think a lot about you know, banking, you think of uh, um, a lot of other fields using uh, investments don't really think so much about chemical engineers, but we, we do use it quite often. You, know, you see banks uh, using investments for uh, profits, you see companies using uh, investments to make product, uh, profits. Uh, but the, our whole purpose is you take a uh, chemical with a low, low value in the market, uh, send it through your project, and the whole purpose is to make something that's going to be cost more than your initial lot. Uh, initial chemical that you put into it. So there's uh, two types of interest. Uh, the, uh, you have simple and compound. And uh, it, it simple interest is just occurred over time. But compound interest means that it, for you're making interest on the interest. So uh, if you have a certain amount of uh, if you have an investment, you're not only making interest off of your initial investment, but you're also making interest off the interest that is occurs year after year after year. Uh, so the uh, the basic is, is just uh, your interest times your, your uh, number of years plus one. So that will give you, you know, a decimal place, 1.07 times your price is your uh, is the value. So, so in this, S is your value and P is your price. So P is the actual money, and uh, F, is, F is what you uh, what your money is worth in the future. And here, when you compound, what you're doing is you're taking your interest plus one, and then you're taking it to a uh, number of uh, number of times that it occurs. So, basically, what you're doing is is this down here. You're doing your price times one plus this, to one plus this, to one plus the interest all the way out. So the basic way to uh, figure out your time basis for compounding interest is uh, your nominal rate of interest over the uh, uh, number of years that it compounds. So uh, that, that's a way to kind of simplify it into your actual, uh, actual rate of, uh, that it compounds. So the, uh, the easiest way to see this is uh, one plus your effective interest rate times the price will give you the uh, value of your money, the uh, future value of your money. And uh, to go between nominal and, or nominal and effective interest rates, it, it, it's just kind of uh, based off how often it occurs. So you just divide it by how often uh, the number of times it occurs, whether it compounds in, uh, quarterly, yearly, monthly. So you divide it by the number of times that it occurs, plus one. So that'll give you a, uh, a decimal, then you take it to the power, and then you minus that one, and that'll give you your effective interest rate. Now, uh, another big part of evaluating uh, the profitability of an operation is a cash flow diagram. A cash flow diagram is very important because 
Uh, if, if, regardless of if our operation is a profitable model, if we don't have the cash flow to uh, to, to sustain our, our business model, we're not going to make uh, if, if we don't have any working capital, then we, we can't make our investments in the pro project. Um, so we got to have models to track our expenses to make sure that we have cash in the bank to uh, fund our investments. And the uh, first one, discrete and discrete. Uh, just takes isolated expenditures and, and kind of gauges them against one another. Uh, you go up with anything, any cash coming in, you go up and down with any cash going out. So uh, your credits and debits go up and down. Um, and, and you just kind of come out with a little chart over a period of time with how much money you spend. And from that, you can make a cumulative cash flow diagram. And a uh, cumulative cash flow diagram kind of takes all factors into account how much money you have in the bank and how uh, over time what happens. And what happens is you start at point zero, time zero, and over time you're going to spend something. You're going to be spending a lot of money in the, in the uh, beginning of your project to, uh, you know, as far as there's a lot of capital costs and you're going to be paying a lot of people and you're not going to be getting a lot of return off your project. Eventually, you're going to have lesser, lesser uh, capital costs, and, and uh, your your operating costs will stay the same. But hopefully, you're making a profit, so you'll uh, you'll eventually start to come up in the positive, into the uh, into the black, as they say. But the uh, the amount of time that it takes until you get from you know not making any money to making money, that's going to be your payback period. And uh, what, what you want to do is you want to make a best case scenario and a worst case scenario. The best case being if everything goes perfectly, this is how much money you're going to spend. The worst case is if everything goes horribly, this is how much money you're going to be spending on each project. And your financing requirement is going to be as much as you're going to need at the lowest point in the worst case scenario because if you, uh, you've, you've got to make it over the hump to, uh, to when you start making a profit. And your uh, payback period is going to be how much time until you uh, turn over but Turn it over to Eric to uh, talk about. Okay, so, um, so when you're looking at cash flow diagrams and doing calculations, comparing multiple different cash flow diagram options, 